We're not live, are we? I'm not sure. No, we're not live, are we? Are we Gary Local? Are we live? Yes. No, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, greetings to those who are with us online. <laughs> Good morning, Laura. Hi. Lutheran Church, welcome to worship this morning with us here in the sanctuary and also live through Facebook. And that Facebook live stream will be um, up 
upload it to YouTube for those of you that uh, are unable to watch it at this time, 9.30, uh, every Sunday morning. <clears throat> welcome, welcome to Christ Lutheran Church. Um, I'm hoping that the slides will progress through our new system, and you'll be able to see it live on, the, on your screen at home as we're looking through uh, at the, our screens here in church. As a matter of fact, we have three, just to let everybody know what's on the screen. And hopefully you at home are seeing the same thing that we are. So um, once again, we here at Christ Lutheran Church would like to welcome you to worship this morning. Uh, to begin with, uh, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord of the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. Uh, we come to the Lord by faith in Jesus Christ. And those of us that come are chosen by him. We are his heritage. Um, and we are so thankful be a part of the body of Christ. Um, our announcements so far that we have today, and there are other announcements in your bulletins, um, I'd like for you to know that I would be more than happy to bring Holy Communion to your home. Um, if you would like that, those of you here in church or those of you um, that are listening or watching through Facebook, please call the church and schedule a time uh, with Judy, if I'm not here, 8.30 to 12.30, and you can catch me most every day. I'm here to 5 o'clock or after. Um, there's our church phone number. Uh, please call us, uh, call me, and let me know that um, you would like uh, to have Holy Communion brought to you at your home. I'd be more than happy to do that for you. All right. The CLC Food Share, we had a great one in February. Once again, we're looking forward to doing the same here uh, in March, coming up. Tomorrow's the 1st of March. So um, we're going to be buying groceries um, the week before the 16th of March. And then March 16th, we'll pick them up. And then at 6.30 p.m., we'll pack the new bags um, for our food share on March 17th from 11.30 to 12.30. So we're packing groceries. When, uh, Tuesday the 16th at 6.30, and we will hand them out Wednesday, 11.30 to 12.30 here at school. All right. I think that's March 17th is our next food share. Okay. Um, our confirmation will be from 4 to 5 p.m. Um, online with me. Um, we're going to confirm a couple of students April 25th, so keep that on your calendar that wonderful time where we're going to confirm a couple of young people. Um, this is on Wednesdays. Our youth Bible study is at the Parsonage with Sue, um, 5, 5.15 time frame. Yep. As soon as I get there, okay. I'll do that. All right. Okay. And the beloved apprentice. Okay, this is really exciting thing that's occurred from the Bible study um, Sue created for the AALC churches. Um, we are doing that in person. Sue is leading that women's Bible study and prayer. Beloved Apprentice in person at church Wednesdays at 10 a.m. And online starting March 2nd. That's this coming Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. So we'll be, she'll be doing that online Tuesday evenings at 6.30 p.m. and live in person <clears throat> here in the fellowship hall. Correct. Go ahead. Just a word about the online class, especially if you're watching on Facebook. I have most everyone's email, but if you want to participate in that online class and you think I might not have your email, uh, then uh, get that to the office and have them let me know. So an invitation for the online class for Tuesday will be going out Monday to all women who have an email with the, with the church. So that means that you can participate if you want to, and if you don't, this is fine. I just want to give that invitation to everybody, and I'll be doing that each week, and you can participate as it works for your schedule. Okay. Thank you. Beloved Apprentice, Women's Bible Study and Prayer. All right. Return to the Lord at Lent and Bible Study will continue throughout Lent until the Wednesday before Holy Week. Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. We had a wonderful study last week on um, return to the Lord, return to prayer. And this week, we'll follow up with today's message, um, 
return from betrayal. So that will be this coming Wednesday's Bible study for Lent. And our Revelation Bible study will resume after Holy Week. That is, that is after Easter Sunday. The Wednesday after Easter Sunday at 6.30 p.m. in a fellowship hall. Our attention today turns to the betrayal and arrest of Jesus. Judas, his betrayer, is present, and we see him in the company of soldiers arrayed against Jesus, standing in the dark, literally and figuratively, turning the very Son of God over to the chief priests and Pharisees who will seek to kill him. It is a somber and sobering scene, punctuated by the astonishing declaration pressures of life overwhelm us. Our sin is always with us. The temptations of the world follow us wherever we go. By our own strength alone we cannot resist them. But you, Lord, are righteous and holy, and your great love and mercy makes us righteous and holy too. For Jesus' sake, take away our guilt and failures. Give us the joy that comes from being your forgiven child. Renew our hearts the love that makes us eager to do your will and devote our life to your glory. If we were ever without you, we would be lost. But because of your promise to be with us always, we will trust in you. We will cling to your word and put our hope in your grace. For your grace is sufficient for all of our needs. Gracious Father, hear our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name. Please um, prepare your hearts and minds for our confession and absolution this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. For the glory of your holy name. Now, Almighty God, in his mercy, has in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand with us as we sing, Come Now, Fount of Every Blessing.
Amen. Please be seated. already done the prayer of the day, but do you know the happy birthday song by heart? Well, today is Judy Stockton's 80th birthday, and we would like to sing happy birthday to her. Okay, you guys out there on Facebook, ready? March? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. God bless you with many, many more. Amen. All right. Now, the service of the Word, Word of God. Good morning, all. I just want to say, bless the Lord, O my soul, and may all that is within me bless His holy name. This is the word of the Lord. Our first reading is from the Old Testament, 2 Samuel, chapter 15. And while Absalom was offering the sacrifices, he sent for Ahithophel the Gilanite, David's counselor, from his city, Gilo. And the conspiracy grew strong, and the people with Absalom kept increasing. Moreover, Ahithophel said to Absalom, let me choose 12,000 men, and I will arise and pursue David tonight. I will come upon him while he is weary and discouraged and throw him into a panic, and all the people who are with him will flee, and I will strike down only the king. And I will bring all the people back to you as a bride comes home to her husband. You seek the life of only one man, and all the people will be at peace. And the advice seemed right in the eyes of Absalom and all the elders of Israel. Gradual, Psalm 41. To the choir master, a psalm of David. Blessed is the one who considers the poor. In the day of trouble, the Lord delivers him. The Lord protects him and keeps him alive. He's called blessed in the land. You do not give him up to the will of his enemies. The Lord sustains him on his sickbed. In his illness, you restore him to full health. As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me, heal me, for I've sinned against you. My enemies say of me in malice, when will he die and his name perish? And when one comes to see me, he utters empty words, while my heart gathers iniquity. When he goes out, he tells it abroad. All who hate me whisper together about me. They imagine the worst for me. They say, a deadly thing is poured out on him. He will not rise again from where he lies. Even my close friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. But you, O oh Lord, be gracious to me and raise me up, that I may repay them. By this I know that you delight in me. My enemy will not shout in triumph over me. But you have upheld me because of my integrity and set me in your place presence forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. Now our New Testament reading is in the book of Acts, chapter 3, starting at verse 14. This is the word of the Lord. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out.
Please stand with me as we ask God to open the eyes of our heart to hear the gospel. Today's gospel lesson is taken from the Gospel of John, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 11. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the brook of Kidron, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, and for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a, a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, went there with lanterns, and torches, and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you see? And they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. And when Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom do you see? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fill, fulfill the word that he had uh, spoken of those whom you gave me. I have lost no one. Let Simon, then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into the sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Return from betrayal. Today's message explores the theme of betrayal, specifically the ways that we betray one another and Jesus our God, through our denials and rejection of the faith, Judas appears in the garden of Gethsemane and betrays Jesus into the hands of lawless men. We live in a culture that prides itself on rejecting the morality that Jesus taught. And we are pressured to betray Jesus in order to fit in. Whether it's, it is failing to acknowledge our faith lest our friends shun us, or going against our conscience to embrace our own sinful urges. It's too easy to turn away from God by betraying Jesus. 
Jesus not only, Jesus did not shy away from the betrayal and did not seek to avoid the consequences. Instead, he stepped right up to it. When the soldiers declared that they're seeking Jesus, he responded simply, I am. More to the point, he ensures the release of his followers. If you seek me, let these men go. This is exactly what happened on the cross. Jesus steps up to our own betrayals and ensures that all of us who believe in him will be free. Imagine for a minute that someone you trusted deeply has betrayed you. At this point, remembering the details of the betrayal aren't really important. But perhaps you told this person something in confidence and he or she shared it with someone else. Maybe, um, maybe this person pretended to be a supporter and it turned out that he was manipulating you for personal gain. Well, I suspect many of you um, are thinking about an event that actually happened to you, maybe. And you haven't conjured up some imaginary betrayal, no, perhaps the prompt uh, brought to mind an actual betrayal, something that hurt you deeply at the time and maybe still stings a bit. Our theme for today revolves around betrayal. You may recall that we're um, working through a series this Lent based upon God's call to return to Him, to return to the Lord. We're looking at different events that occurred during Jesus' passion and are thinking about the sins that were committed during this time. The different kinds of behavior that was that was you know expressed during this time. And my hope is that we will see the ways that our own sins pull us away from God and that we will hear His call to return to Him because He offers reconciliation and forgiveness. In the Gospel lesson, Jesus is betrayed by Judas Iscariot. Judas makes a deal with the chief priests and scribes to turn over, uh, turn Jesus over to him, or over to them, knowing full well that their intention is to have him killed. He knew that. Jesus, uh, I'm sorry, Judas's actions are hard to comprehend they are dark and painful and self-serving. We have no problem recognizing this, the sin in what he did, but it might be hard for us to see the sin when we betray Jesus through our own actions. But we'll get back to that in a moment. But I want to set the stage by first looking at another betrayal, an older betrayal, that of King David by his own son Absalom and his trusted advisor, Ahithophel. We read that just a few moments ago. And obviously we see that the story is a story of betrayal. It is also a story of, of how one's, one sin can produce many others, and how the consequences of sin ripple out to impact many more people than we might expect. It starts with a sort of affair between David and Bathsheba, the story begins when David sees her bathing on the rooftop, initiates an inappropriate affair, and she becomes pregnant. He tries to find some ways to cover uh, up the sinful liaison. However, his plan goes awry. He, so he plans to ensure that her husband Uriah um, will be killed in battle. In the meantime, David is called out for his sin. He repents. The baby dies. And a huge rift is created within David's own family. One of the major impacts of David and Bathsheba's sin is the rift in the family. Absalom, David's son, rebels and undertakes a campaign to unseat his father and take over the throne. One of the people that Absalom enlisted in this plot is Ahithophel, a trusted advisor to David, who also happened to be Bathsheba's grandfather. What could possibly go wrong? As the story unfolds, Ahithophel outlines a plot to Absalom by which he would raise up an army of 12,000 men to hunt down and kill David. So Absalom liked the plan. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out that way, which is a little ironic because Ahithophel's plan probably would have been successful. David had planted a spy. Who out 
outlined a different plan involving a lot more men. And Absalom chose to go along with his plan. Hushai had tipped David off to exactly what was coming, so it didn't work out very well. Absalom died, Ithophel died, and David retained his throne. The betrayal haunted David. In fact, it even came out in one of his psalms. That psalm that's, that uh, Sue read this morning, specifically Psalm 41, where David says, Even my close friend, in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. David laments the fact that, that a trusted advisor, Ahithophel, has betrayed him, has turned against him, has taken steps to try and kill him in order to place someone else on his throne. Betrayal can be hurtful. We understand the pain that betrayal causes because we have, we've all been subjected at some point in our lives. It's why I asked you at the beginning of the message to imagine being betrayed by someone you trust. We don't always consider the ways our actions amount to a betrayal. Let me say this one more time. We don't always consider the way our actions amount to a betrayal of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Ahithophel betrayed David in order to put someone else on the throne. And you've done exactly the same thing. You betrayed Jesus in order to put yourself on the throne. You denied his lordship before others. You ignored God's commandments and sought to do things your own way. You treated others thoughtlessly and elevated yourself over them, directed, directly contradicting the biblical Encouragement to count others more significant than yourself. Does the result of our our betrayal, the gospel message is blunted, the good news is blocked. People don't hear or see the amazing love of Jesus Christ because we have pushed Jesus into the background and denied His importance in our own lives. God urges us to be bold in our proclamation of the gospel. Jesus himself said that we were to go therefore and make disciples of all nations. And yet, and yet our actions are exactly the opposite sometimes. Our actions are a betrayal that avoids discipling by avoiding the sharing of the good news. It's a betrayal that seeks to make Jesus secondary to our own ambitions and desires to sinfully elevate ourselves. It's not easy to hear, is it? No. It's a little like the epistle lesson from Acts that we heard just a moment ago that Sue read, where Peter spoke at Solomon's portico and called the Israelites to repentance in verses 14 and 15. Where he says, you deny the holy and righteous one and ask for a murderer to be granted to you. And you kill the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. Then Peter declares in verse 19, Repent therefore and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out. But this echoes the invitation that we heard on Ash Wednesday from the prophet Joel. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Astonishingly, Jesus knew all of this in the Garden of Gethsemane. He knew about Judas' betrayal. He also knows about ours, yours and mine. He knew that you would fail. He knew that I would fail. He knew that, that we would betray him in 50 little ways without even intending to. He knew that he had a solution, though. He says, shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? You know what that cup means? In the Old Testament, that term relates to death or the wrath of God. God says, return to me. 
I want you to be true to me. And even if you fail at that, I have already stepped in to provide blessings. He offers forgiveness. He offers peace. He offers the strength to turn back and receive life. Psalm 81, 11 through 16 declares, But my people did not listen to my voice, and Israel did not obey me. So I gave them over to the stubbornness of their heart, to walk by their own plans. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I would quickly subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their adversaries. And those who hate the Lord would pretend to obey Him. And their time of punishment would be forever. But I would feed you with the finest of wheat. And with honey from the rock I would satisfy. When we return to God, we receive all that He has promised. We are washed in the blood of the Lamb. Our sins are taken away from us. We are strengthened through the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion, and in and by the Word of God, which also offers comfort and consolation to us and also gives us words to speak and stories to tell so that others may turn their turn back to God. In Him, all is made right. In Him, all are made clean. In Him, all are reconciled. May you be encouraged to share the gospel, to turn from betrayal, and return to the Lord your God. May you be blessed and strengthened in all that you do, so that you may bring glory to God. In Jesus' name. Appropriately, our songs, uh, gospel songs, are to change my heart, O oh God, and when I took, I'm sorry, when I look into your holiness, change my heart, O oh God. May it ever, ever. Be. Change my heart, oh God, may I be like. 
worship the Lord now. I worship Please stand as you're able, as we give thanks for the grateful heart to the Lord. We see our morning now.
Please be seated. Today's prayer of the church is in the ectine or ectine form, um, where your response would be, Lord, have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Lord to set our minds on his things rather than the things of men, that we may deny ourselves, take up our crosses, and follow his Son through this life and through the joys of his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Lord who has given his church the joy of proclaiming the truth, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, to grant to all pastors the gift of his Spirit to preach and teach this truth boldly and faithfully, and to help us confess it in word and deed in our daily lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Lord to keep us from being ashamed of the Son of Man when we face persecution for his name in the world, that he may not be ashamed of us when he comes in his glory with the angels, and for him to be near to all those who are facing martyrdom for Christ that they might be sustained unto the end and crowned with life before him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the Lord, to whom belongs all kingship and rule over the nations, would bless and all those who govern us in his stead, that we may be ruled wisely and in accord with his will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Lord, through his Holy Spirit, to pour out his love into the hearts of all, on all who suffer in our midst, that their suffering may produce endurance, endurance of character, and character of hope that will not put them to shame, and that he would grant them health and healing in accord with his perfect will, and sustain them in the faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the Lord, before whom a multitude of nations rejoice in heaven, would sustain us in the same justifying faith of Abraham, that as his offering, offspring we may share in the everlasting covenant God made with him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God and forever, and who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, that peace which passes all of your understanding. Going out and you're coming in, and lying down and you're rising up. From this day forth, forevermore, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our last song for today is In Christ Alone. My hope is found. He is my life, my strength, and my song. That is my prayer for you today. In Christ's name. Christ. 